Two weeks ago, Senator Jeff Merkley tried to get a tour of an immigrant detention center at an abandoned Walmart building in Brownsville, Texas, that houses children. Senator Merkley was not allowed inside. No one would grant him an interview. Another grocery store pulling up stakes in the Redbird area of Dallas. Walmart announcing today that it's closing its Wheatland Road Supercenter by the end of the month. Our Robbie Owens live at the store near Highway 67 with reaction and the community's concerns. Robbie? Yeah, Gilma, when this Walmart here opened more than 30 years ago, I can recall there were at least three other grocery stores open in the area. They have all since closed. And now city leaders say Walmart's planned departure will be a big blow in an area that's already struggling with too few options. Closing day getting closer and closer for one East Tennessee big box store. Yeah, in three days, the pharmacy will be closing at the Walmart on University Commons Way near UT's campus. Uh, that is the first step. By the end of the month, specifically March 29th, this Walmart will close its doors for good. New at noon, a Midlands Walmart neighborhood store is permanently closing its doors at the end of next month. A spokesperson for the company tells News 19 that the location on Broad River Road will close on March 29th after only being open about three years. The closing location is three miles apart from a Walmart supercenter. The last day of operation again will be March 29th. The Walmart Supercenter on the Evangeline Thruway in Lafayette will close on March 29th, the pharmacy on the 15th. Now, the company tells KATC store performance is one of the reasons for the closure. Our Danielle Garcia live at that location. And Danielle, how are customers reacting to the news? Jim, customers tell me they're upset because the next closest Walmarts are in Karen Crow and in Pinhook. And they also say they're worried about what's next for the store's more than 300 employees. It's it's heartbreaking. It's more heartbreaking going in there and seeing the workers. They're crying. They're upset. And from what I'm understanding, they're not guaranteed jobs. Mandy Francis lives near this Walmart. A friend of hers has worked here for 20 years. They're feeling like they just lost everything. And they're telling them that they have to reapply and get an assessment. That's crazy. They were loading up with as many people. It's got to be dozens of people mm, in the back oh of that thing. Gosh. They take them to a nearby Walmart, mm. uh, and then the Walmart is where uh, I guess metro buses or school buses will take them to the shelter. The question is, what shelter are they taking them to? Because I heard Tom say, GRB is overcrowded and and uh, or not overcrowded, but at the capacity they had planned for. So right. I think they're. Gosh, if, I, I certainly have that question. I don't know if we've answered it. But that's what you mean when you say disorganized organization, because there is. At least some kind of system. I mean, earlier we've seen reporters have situations where people come out of water like this, and it's late at night, and they're wet, and with their children and their pets, and uh, they really have nowhere to go. At least they have a system where they're taking them to a Walmart where they can be inside and and wait and figure out what comes next. President Trump has escalated the U.S. trade tensions with China. He's threatening to raise tariffs again on essentially all remaining imports from China, which are valued at an estimated $300 billion. This comes after the Chinese delegation left meetings with U.S. officials in Washington yesterday with no deal. Let's talk more about the impact of these new tariffs on ordinary Americans. CNN's Tom Foreman joins us live now from Washington. So, so Tom, um, is it expected that U.S. businesses will automatically pass on the cost of these tariffs to American consumers. Yes, it's not sure how much, right? It's not, not clear how many of the Chinese companies that were affected by this were automatically passing cost on. But at some point, there is enough pressure, things have to break, and at that point, yes, all signs are American consumers will feel it. Well, I mean, I think right now what we need to do is pull back engage our, our trading allies, engage our, uh, you know, our d consistent partners, and try and put more pressure on China, not by imposing tariffs resulting in increased cost to consumers, devastation to people in my state in agriculture, but taking a look at how we can leverage the support that we have from the rest of the free world to control Chinese So behavior. a UN type of, of, of move. China is threatening retaliatory tariffs in response to President Trump's announcement that tariffs will go up to 25 percent from 10 percent on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods coming into this country that sets to go into effect first thing Friday morning. 
By the way, you see the tariffs we're doing? Because they broke the deal. They broke the deal. They broke the deal. They'll be paying. We don't make the deal. Nothing wrong with taking in over $100 billion a year. $100 billion. Under the previous administration, the United States lost nearly a quarter of a million manufacturing jobs. You remember that. They let other countries raid our factories, steal our jobs, and rob us blind. Other than that, they were very nice. They allowed China to freely loot our economy, plunder our intellectual property, and target our industries for destruction. That's what was happening. And look, President Xi is a friend of mine, great guy, but he, he's for China. I'm for the USA. I'm for the USA. Now, we won't back down until China stops cheating our workers and stealing our jobs, and that's what's going to happen. Chinese trade negotiators left Washington this afternoon, apparently with little more to show for their 48-hour trip halfway around the world than a barrage of tweets from the president. Tariffs will make our country much stronger, not weaker, said one tweet. Another falsely claimed that tariffs are now being paid to the United States by China of 25 percent on $250 billion worth of goods and products. These massive payments go directly to the Treasury of the U.S. The payments do go to the U.S. Treasury, but they come from U.S. taxpayers, not the Chinese. And U.S. taxpayers could pay even more. And then if the president goes ahead and does what he says he wants to do for the next step, which is basically put a 25 percent tariff tax on every other good coming in from China, then that will absolutely go to the pocketbooks of Americans. An expanded trade war could cost a million American jobs, by some estimates. It didn't have to be this way, says the former U.S. trade representative who negotiated NAFTA. If the U.S. had joined the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it wouldn't be fighting China on its own right now, and China would have more reason to fall into line with international trade rules. Uh, our alternative is, is an excellent one. It's an alternative I've spoken about for years. We'll take in well over $100 billion a year. We never took in 10 cents from China, not 10 cents. And it'll be a, I think it'll be a very strong day, frankly. But we'll see. We'll see. I happen to think that tariffs for our country are very powerful. You know, we're the piggy bank that everybody steals from, including China. We've been paying China $500 billion a year for many, many years. China rebuilt their country because of us. Because we have billions of dollars coming to our country that our country never would have seen with a regular president. This should have been done many years ago. And I told President Xi of China, and I tell Abi, who's a good friend of mine, Prime Minister of Japan, doing a great job. I tell him. I tell everybody. I say, I don't blame you. I blame the people that ran the United States, and I blame their trade representatives, and frankly, I blame our presidents, because this should have never happened. Yeah, there are a few names. If you, if you look at the, the major retailers in the U.S., uh, the ones that import the most from China, whereas if you, if you had uh, tariffs on everything, uh, not just the half of current imports that we have now, and it went to 25 percent, those are the ones at most risk. So far, uh, that's not where we're going, but that's the thing we're going to be watching closely. So the concern is if tariffs go to 25 percent across the board. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're just talking about $200 billion worth of goods, but the president's tweet on Sunday said this could go to, to the rest of them. That would wipe out earnings growth for the whole sector. Exactly. So we're looking for retail earnings to grow uh, just over 8 percent this year. If we got uh, the 10% across everything, that would take about three percentage points off of that. And if we went to 25%, it would take away all earnings growth for retail. Is this and because their response will be to uh, let their margins get squeezed? Well, actually, this assumes there is some good mitigation in terms of cost reduction, moving uh, sourcing. We've already seen this with some of the early tariffs to other countries, such as Vietnam or Bangladesh. Uh, but it's also a question of what you could price through. So we think the average retailer will be able to mitigate or price through about 80%. That's what we've seen so far of the first round of tariffs. So that's sort of our work assumes that that could be kept up. Uh, if, it was, if they couldn't do that, uh, it would be more than just wipe it out earnings growth. You could actually see earnings decline. Ultimately, it's really not China that's paying for this. It's the American consumer that's paying for the, the, this tariff on imported goods. So is this really hurting China's economy? 
You should say that a little louder so the president can hear you. He keeps sort of saying that it's, uh, he keeps framing it as like a punishment for China against China. Um, but it's not something that we can really say definitively here. Uh, China's sort of very opaque with their economic numbers. But actually, uh, one thing we can say is that during 2018, last year, which was the first year these tariffs started to go into effect, um, there were actually more imports from China that year than there were the previous year. So if the goal of the tariffs was to sort of lock China out of the U.S. market and cut them off from our teat or whatever. Uh, didn't really happen, did in fact the opposite. So the talks ended, mm -hmm. um, nothing really achieved. Is there a sense, and there haven't been any retaliatory sanctions, is there a sense that China might launch something coming up? Yeah, uh, the Ministry of Commerce put out a statement uh, in Beijing last week that basically said, we regret that we will have to take countermeasures, um, but they probably will. I mean, they have at every step of the way. There's no real reason to think that they would change course now. It's a matter of um, sort of deciding what is most, you know, digestible for them. But yes, I would imagine, um, you know, as these U.S. tariffs take hold, we can expect retaliation from China again. And the president, of course, tweeted Saturday morning about this. I want to read this to you uh, about the sanctions. Such an easy way to avoid tariffs. Make or produce your goods or products in the good old USA. It's very simple. So it was really interesting, the trend that we've been seeing. In 2018, actually, we had fewer store closures than in 2017, but 2019 is starting out to be another year for major retail store closures. So year to date, we have at least 5,163 store closures that have been announced. Compare that to just over 5,500, but in all of 2018. But to be fair, when you net out the closings with announced new store openings, you get a net 3,577 store closures that have been announced so far this year, compared to 3,075 in all of 2018. Now, some of the closures are for bankruptcies or liquidations. Others, though, are just closing underperforming stores and a more typical pruning that does often happen after the holiday season. So Payless is closing all 2,100 of its stores left over. Jim Bree, all 749. Charlotte Roos closing. 512 stores. All of those three are because they're being liquidated after failed bankruptcy reorganizations. Asina Retail, remember that's the company that owns Ann Taylor, Loft, Dress Barn, Lane Bryant, Justice, Maurice's, and Catherine's. They're going to close 400 locations collectively. And then today, as you mentioned, Dollar Tree said it's closing 390 family dollar stores. Last week, Gap Inc. said it's going to close 230 Gap brand stores over two years. Destination Maternity is shuttering 117 doors. There's a lot more. But American consumers could soon feel a greater impact if the tariffs expand to consumer products as threatened. China would be expected to pass on those expenses, jacking up prices on smartphones, computers, televisions, fitness trackers, and much more. The extra cost for the average American family of four is expected to be close to $800. What could drive it? Three quarters of the toys bought in the U.S. are made in China, including these hugely popular dolls. 93% of Chinese-made footwear, including some shoes for Nike, could be hit. So could clothing, Bluetooth headsets, and even drones. Trump's tariffs on China last year steered away from consumer goods and focused on industrial items such as solar panels, steel, and aluminum. Those costs were passed on by American companies. American consumers are already paying. They, they just don't really know. It's kind of a stealth tax. Huh. But uh, it's going to become a very obvious tax uh, not, too, uh, yeah. not too far yeah. from now if this, if this continues. The major markets are already showing unease over the clash. In the next three years, if China and the U.S. continue warring over trade, economists say both countries could see their economies slow down and close to a million American jobs might be lost. Still, the president has long insisted China is cheating the U.S. by stealing intellectual property, manipulating currency, and most recently reneging on a framework for a deal. And he's convinced China will blink first, tweeting, tariffs will make our country much stronger, not weaker. Just sit back and watch. With what consumers might be having to deal with in those three weeks. Lauren. Neil, this is the largest store in the nation, the largest department store. And consumers here, consumers everywhere are getting ready to spend $767 more this year. That's a number that's being put on it because of this increase uh, in the tariff. And this is being put on uh, thousands of items that you can buy in stores like Macy's. Everything from backpacks and handbags to furniture and clothing, luggage, perfume, dinnerware. 
nuts, shampoo, all sorts of food. Now, some folks that we spoke to here, Neil, they're willing to accept this short-term pain for the long-term gain. In the long run, it's going to benefit us as U.S. consumers because someone has to be tough and actually hold the line with the Chinese. With these tariffs, it's scary. It really is. There's a lot of little people that are really going to be affected by the fact that they can't afford these things that were affordable yesterday. I think it will affect all types of different businesses, and especially I'm in retail. Overall, if it would help, I would be okay. I would probably just stop spending as much. we got to play fair, and I think that's what Donald Trump is trying to do. If I have to take a hit to improve our country in that way, then I'm happy to do it. But what happens if all of the imports to this country are hit with a tariff? As the U.S. Trade Administration's office is now preparing to do, well, the Trade Partnership, um, that's a group that studies trade policy and its impact. They say that will cost a family of four $2,000 a year, and, Neil, that might not be so easy for Americans to bear. The other thing is this. Even if we do get a trade deal with China, that doesn't mean the tariffs come off. Back to you. That's right. Uh, there are no guarantees of, of anything right now. Thank you.